Good afternoon, everyone. We will just get started in a brief moment. Welcome to today's webinar, Build Your Management Skills, How to Attract, Retain, and Manage Great Employees. For those of you joining us for the very first time today, Pursuit is a community-focused lender that offers alternative financing and SBA loan programs to small businesses in New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. Our mission is to provide businesses with affordable loans and other business resources so they can reach higher, transform, and grow. My name is Malini Krishna, and I work in the Business Advisory Services Group here at Pursuit. Our group is dedicated to working with our community finance borrowers, providing them consulting services, educational programming, and ongoing support to sustain and improve their businesses. Today, I'm joined by Wendy Waldron, founder of Waldron Works. She is an established EOS implementer, accomplished medical practice executive, project manager, and something I can personally attest to, a great energy aligner and storyteller. Welcome, Wendy. Well, thank you so much. Uh, thank Wendy, you for having me. Yeah, Wendy is one of our thought partners on the topics of management, employee performance, and building your organizational capacity. So the goal of today's webinar is not only just to talk about leadership from the perspective of managing others or being a team leader, but also to strengthen your capacity to lead your business. So we really think this is not only just for what you have to do for employees, but what you have to do for ourselves. And as I like to say, whether you're a sole proprietor or managing a team of 10, you, the business owner, are the most important employee of your company. So my hope is that you will have more tools uh, in your management toolbox by the end of this webinar. We encourage you to make this interactive, so you can type your questions in the chat box that is uh, on your GoToWebinar um, menu, and I will convey those to Wendy throughout the webinar. So without delay, let me turn yes. it over to Wendy. Thank you so much for sharing your insights today. Oh, I'm excited. Uh, as Malina, uh, as, as she said, I created Waldron Works, and I created it specifically to support you to support you in chasing your dreams, in building your companies, um, and it, to recognize the potential in each and every one of us. There's so much that we can do, uh, but we can't do it alone, right? We need, we need mentors, we need trainers, we need help, we need people, uh, because you might be fantastic at whatever your trade or your art or your craft, uh, but you know there's more to it than that. Um, so what is the more to it? Um, that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, Pursuit, of course, does provide lending. It also, though, provides um, something called technical assistance. So part of making sure that you know uh, what I do and what people like me do is knowing that there's this sort of help available to you as well. Um, Waldron Works um, was created very specifically to honor the potential in each of us. I do that um, by working with business owners and leaders and their leadership teams, specifically using this model called the Entrepreneurial Operating System, EOS. So EOS um, is, a, is a lot of things, right? This is a model that takes into account uh, everything about moving a group of people forward in a given direction, everything from vision planning, uh, to the people themselves that make it go, having the right people in the right seats, um, and making sure that you're measuring not everything, not everything at all. And most of the time we're measuring way too much and we don't know what to do with it, right? But rather measuring your actions and which ones are helpful to you um, and keeping track of those bigger metrics that you need for yourself outside of a PL, outside of most of your spreadsheets. Maybe it's numbers of clients. Maybe it is measuring the impact you've had, whether that's the number of meals you've served or lawns you've taken care of, cars you've fixed, whatever your business might be, um, finding those right metrics. Um, we go then further, though. We dig deeper and say, well, once you've got the right people in place and once you're measuring the right things, issues are going to pop up. They're good things. They're bad things. They are opportunities. They're questions. 
we call it all issues, and we give you a way to tackle those issues, a place to think about them. So it might be that if business keeps going for you as well as it's been, that in six months or a year or three years, you know, you might need different space. You don't need different space tomorrow, so let's not have this week and in every meeting, you need to think about it. So that's what I mean by issues being discussed in the place where they really are most helpful to you. Um, process documentation. Once you grow to a significant size, part of many of your issues will have to do with people doing things in different ways. You'll develop a best practice, maybe in your industry that exists already. Maybe there are thought leaders who have said, really, this is the best way to do it. So let's make sure you're doing it that way and that everyone is doing it that way. And then finally, traction means that with EOS, we teach you how to bring that vision right down to the ground. The schedule of meetings, the schedule of times when you're working together, the quarterly look back and look ahead, an annual planning session, really to dig into what, what do you predict will happen in your business because what do you plan on making happen? Right, so that's what it is. So what is the entrepreneurial operating system? It is a management structure for great companies. It is a solution for owners who want their sanity back, right? It's like the worst thing in the world for someone to have a wonderfully thriving business, but for them to not know how to run it. And so they're literally working 12 hours all the time every day, right? Every weekend, they're stressed every evening. There's another way. There's a better way. Uh, the EOS system is a holistic system. It's a proven process. So today, I'll take just a couple of tools and introduce you to those tools so that you get a flavor, right? But know that just like with anything else, one little thing might be useful, but it's the collection. It's the sum of the parts. Uh, is the you know the the what's that phrase? The sum is greater than the the total is greater than the sum of the parts, right? The idea is you use the tools together um, for a, for that synergy so that you really have a process that includes everyone in your company, starting with you, starting with your leadership team if you have one, and then expanding as you grow. Um, and the answer, of course, is that EOS is all of the above. It is A, B, and C. So here's the dream, right? This is the American dream. This is what we think we're building or what we maybe hope we're building when we start our own companies. I have been in business now for a couple of years, and I can tell you that an infinity pool is probably on my, my wish list, right? They're beautiful. But we know that while there may be moments, most days don't feel like this, right? Most days don't look like this. Most days might feel a little bit uh, more like this, a little more like gears or grinding, right? that you're thinking about all of these things, whether it's performance, productivity, cash flow, efficiency, um, the, the orders that are coming in or the, the phone that is not ringing, the systems that aren't working. Uh, so there's a lot, right, to get to that point where we're talking about an infinity pool. For most of us, we're really just looking at how we move through the day, how we get to a different place from where we've been before. Uh, I was talking with someone just today and he said he'd owned a business uh, for 20 years, um, but it just was too much. He said, you know, I had all the customers I wanted, um, but it didn't look like this. It felt like this all the time. Um, and he said to me, he quite literally said, I hit the ceiling. I said, whoa, that's exactly the concept that I'm going to be talking about in a webinar later this afternoon, hitting the ceiling. We know that growth doesn't happen in a straight line, right? We grow for a while and then it gets hard and you work your way through it. But, it, you know, hopefully maybe you kind of pass through that first ceiling. Maybe you didn't even recognize it as a ceiling. It was just growing pains. And you carry on for a while longer. That trajectory goes, goes up. You're feeling pretty good. Something else happens, right? And you flutter, kind of flutter along and, and flail along for a while. And sometimes in that middle ground, you might actually become so accustomed to it that you think that that's just the way work is. It's just hard, right? And anybody who tries to tell you otherwise 
just doesn't know. They just haven't been there. Sometimes you can keep that up for a long time, for better or for worse, right? Sometimes companies just fall off and they aren't able to. The lucky few learn something new. They use a new tool. They come to a different understanding. They change something about what they're doing to break through that ceiling and continue on an upward trajectory. Those people, those entrepreneurs, are just like you. They just learned something else. They added a different tool. They came to a different understanding about how to do their work. Within the EOS system, Gino Wickman, who created it, has identified these five leadership abilities. Every single one of them is tied into that ceiling. You must get better at these things in order to continue to grow your business. So what are they, right? And again, right here, just as we talked about in the beginning, we're not gonna talk about spreadsheets. We're not gonna talk about your P&L statement. We're not gonna talk about your business plan. I'm not gonna talk about HR laws, or sick pay, or PPP loans, or any of that. This is you as a leader running your company, thinking of it as a company. This could also be called think like a boss, right? How to think on your business and work on it rather than just in it all the time, rather than filling orders or doing nails or hair or doing what, whatever you're doing in your, in your business. It's not just about that part, but it's about all the rest of it. So the first thing is to simplify. Truly great leaders understand that we all have limited attention spans, that if you take your focus and spread it out over a lot of stuff, it's going to be um, weaker, right, than if you were laser focused on something. You need to simplify so that you can be more like a laser and less like the sun. Think of the sun, right? Today it's a gorgeous sunny day. That sun is light years away. There is so much energy in that ball of gas and such. It's almost an inconceivable to us. And yet, the worst that's going to happen is you walk outside and you know maybe you get a little sunburn. You feel its warmth. It's useful. Just a fraction of a few little kilowatts focused in. We call that a laser, right? You can cut. You can cut a diamond. You cut through steel. So imagine the difference, all this energy, no focus, a little bit of energy, a lot of focus. That's, the, that's why we simplify. That's why you need to simplify and literally just dumb everything down. Keep it simple, decide what you're doing and stick to it and do that one thing. Next is to delegate. Delegate and elevate to your unique ability. It's hard to let go, right? It's hard to let go because um, how will you know that they're gonna do it right, right? How do you know that it will be done well? It's your name on it. And yet, if you aren't the one doing the work, then how can you trust that it's done well? Tricky. However, if you are the one who is doing everything, that is a little bit of a newsflash, right? You're not good at everything. <laughs> there are other people who can add to the level of your business when you can get outside of your own ego. So when you learn to identify the, all of the task that needs to be done and clarify the values around it, the goals around it, the actual task itself, we can talk about those things. That's when you can be free to delegate and know that that work will be done well. That leaves you with time to, to work on your business, to do higher level thinking, mm. to do what only mm. you can do and what you do very, very well. So let that happen. Next is predict. Now, we don't have crystal balls. If we did, we would have all run to a tropical island and stayed there several months ago, right? <laughs> um, it has been a year. So who am I to say you should have this leadership ability to predict the future? But if I said plan, would it sound different? If I said plan your future, what's going to happen in the next three months? What are you planning for this year? Right, so that sounds a little more reasonable maybe. 
Now, I'll back off and say, what's the difference between plan and predict? And is it commitment to a plan? If you write a plan, if you say, I'll try to do that, this is what I'd like to see happen. It might happen. But is it really all that likely to happen? On the other hand, if you predict that your sales will be X, I'll say 100 widgets over the next year, and you get through the first quarter of this year and you've sold 10, well, maybe you should change something that you're doing, right? If you're planning on selling 100, if you've predicted that you're gonna sell 100, you're definitely gonna change something and you won't wait until the first three months have gone by. So that level of commitment to yourself a belief that it's truly possible to do what you plan to do is really important. You'll be swayed much less. Systems. Leadership ability number four is all about systems. So if you start out with a side gig and say, say you're consulting, you're an IT consultant, you help people figure out whatever their IT stuff is. And you do a few little gigs on the side. You have a couple of customers. They give you some really good reviews. Um, and then I'll say COVID hits and you lose your job. And now your side hustle is going to become your all the time work, right? Um, and you start doing more of it, more one-offs. And you decide that, that actually that's not customized. That's a one-off. That's really a challenging thing to do. And that it's easier you begin to realize that it's easier, that it's more efficient to do things in the same way, that you can customize the service that you give to individual people, but you and your own process will have a process, and two, you'll follow it, you'll have a checklist, so that you remember if you are, if you're appraising somebody's home, if you are, um, asking them about a particular area of their work. If you are just selling something and you wanna to remember to mention their pet, ask about their family, these things that, that you will do, right? Most of the time, write down what most of the time is. Write down what that best practice is. Write down when you have a really, really great day, what did you do to make it a great day? Let's identify what that is and make sure you do that all the time, right? Those systems, whether you call it a standard operating procedure, a checklist, a routine, when you can reduce all of the magic that you make happen to a list of, or a collection of lists, a process of, of the way things are best done, then you can repeat it without thinking about it so that your thoughts can go toward working again on your business instead of in it, to making improvements, to realizing that maybe this, this one part of your process has changed, new opportunity. You're gonna put in some automation. You're gonna use a different shipping person. You're gonna figure out something a little bit more, uh, a little bit different, and you can identify that variable in more than one checklist so that as your business scales, you are teaching yourself even how to work on your business, how to make improvements as you go. You're not doing it on the fly. You're not doing it just most of the time. You're doing it all the time because that's what you've identified as great work. So let's do great work all the time. That's the power of systems in your business. The fifth leadership ability is structure. So if there's more than just you, and I would argue even if it's just one person, right? Even if you are all the way to the left on this continuum, going from a solopreneur through solo plus some help, solo with an employee or two, solo with a couple of part-timers, with a consultant, Maybe you have a crew and now maybe you have two crews, right? You've got a super, you've got a brother running that other crew. Whatever your business is, if it's anything bigger than you, you really, of course, need to just identify who is doing what. So some organizations run on something they call an org chart. It has a lot of titles and people jockey for who's on top, right? How you draw it so that it, it looks impressive. 
I'm not concerned with impressing anybody. This is not about ego. Within your company, let's decide who's responsible for social media posts. Let's decide who's responsible for sponsoring a local softball league, right? Let's decide who's responsible for finding the best deal on packaging if you're shipping something. And then let's let that person work, right? Let them do their job. That doesn't mean you can't talk about it. Of course you can. But it becomes just so much simpler when everything is in some sort of group think. You really have to be able to let your people shine. And they can't do that if they don't know what they're responsible for doing. So an accountability chart is the way that you can take, take a look at that. Those are the five. Those are the five leadership abilities most essential for growth, most essential for you as your company's biggest asset, right? You are what your company has going for it more than anything else. So let's take care and look at what you are doing within your company, no matter how big you are, even if it's just you, right? Have you thought about these things? Have you, have you truly understood the power that you have to influence the trajectory of your business? Or has it just been a heck of a week already, right? And it's only Tuesday. <laughs> has it been a heck of a year? So if so, brush yourself off, right? Dust yourself off and let's think about how you put these things into place uh, for your company right now. And Wendy, so with that, yes. yeah, Wendy, you and I both have been small business owners and have done this. Um, how often do you practice these five abilities? Like, do you revisit them weekly, monthly, yearly? And I, I often think about when I first learned about this, oh, I can put this in line with my budget and things like that. But it, is there a best practice of how often you should revisit these things? Yes. Um, what I teach people is to build in, build these things into your daily work, into your weekly work even. Mm -hmm. So the next segment in the, the second half of my presentation is about what I call the 555. It's a way to give performance evaluation um, back to anybody that's working with you. And in fact, you could do it for yourself too. Right. But what it does is it goes. These are concepts. These are almost theoretical concepts. You should you should um, simplify. Well, what is what does that really mean? I could think about simplifying. But wh what does that actually mean? Uh, so what I'd like to do is to show the 555. We'll talk about scorecard. We'll talk about rocks and we'll talk about um, core values. And that takes that is um, those are practical tools that support your development in these five areas. Because Great. it can't be once a year. It can't even be once a quarter, right? We know, we know that it has to be that you're finding a way. I teach people to do what's called a clarity break. A clarity break, you set your own schedule, but at least once a month, some people do it every week. You literally take a pencil and not your iPad, right? Take a pencil or a pen and a blank sheet of paper. Go to a comfortable place, turn everything else out, and write down your thoughts so that you're thinking about the future of your business and you're actively thinking, not just dreaming, but you're really working out in your head. You're finding a place for all these things to, to kind of follow. Um, and that would be a great time to just remind yourself to think of the, uh, think on these five, uh, but it has to be built into your practice. Great, thanks. Right. All right. So. On to growth management. So performance evaluation, um, to me, sounds like that. <laughs> it just does, right? If anybody talks about having an annual performance evaluation, it feels like you're going to the principal's office. Even if you adore the person who's giving you this performance evaluation, even if you feel like you've done well and you don't have any doubts, there's just something kind of archaic and out of place. In some workplaces, um, these there still are 17 and 20 page documents that have to be filled out. Um, you'll have to fill those out. Um, that's, that's almost like the extra thing. Um, but I'm gonna go through three different um, truths, three truths about growth management when you're working with anybody else um, to get you there. The first is that when you talk about job performance, you need to know and believe in your heart and soul that it's got nothing to do with their value as a person on this planet. I'll say that again, right? You, you might be their boss, but you're just their boss. 
It's just about the work that you're doing together. Let's not make it heavier than that. Let's not make it all laden down with emotion and history, and particularly in family businesses, with all the family history, or with, with your friend, you've been buddies since elementary school now, and you're just so excited, you're gonna open a barbershop together, except now every conversation is layers of, of emotion. It just can't be that way, right? Job performance is about a specific task, specific set of tasks or responsibilities having nothing to do with personal value. Simplicity is essential for growth. Again, again with simplicity, right? There's a really great, um, there's a great activity we could do if there's time in the end with dots and lines, right? Every time you add a new element to your environment, a new person on your team, a new piece of information, a new tool, but most especially a new person, everything gets more complicated, doesn't it? it? So as much as we can, you just must drive every day to simplify anything, even if it doesn't seem like it makes that much difference, right? But what kind of pens are you ordering? What sort of, um, what, what sort of whatever you're using, use the same kind. If you're ordering three different kinds of pens, three more things to think of and check up, right? Just order one kind of pen, carry on. The third thing about growth management is that you have to know how to win, right? You have to know the rules of the game. This may sound obvious, but, but imagine going to a field with a whole bunch of people and there are three different kinds of balls and everybody starts running around the field and you're truly not even sure if you're playing football or soccer or I mean, somebody's got a baseball over there, right? So mm -hmm. let's just clarify exactly what game are you playing. And we'll do that specifically through these three tools, core values, scorecard, and rocks. Those three things outline the rules of the game, and they also serve as a wonderful mini agenda for what I'll suggest you do quarterly, and that's just take a walk and hit on each of those three things with everybody that you work with. Just make sure you take them aside, literally go for a walk, go for a cup of coffee, um, have a chat if you can, with COVID, with, with distance, if you can't do that, then at least make it something that is not your typical Zoom environment. We will start uh, with core values. Core values for your company, no matter how big or small, are, are where you begin, right? They're essential guiding principles about who you are. They, they're used as a filter, as a magnet. You'll come back to them time and time again. Um, because it isn't just that you want people like you, right? And you don't necessarily want people who happen to be the first ones along, and then you know you have what's called accidental core values. You don't want to have aspirational core values. Those are those core values that you wish you had, right? Like work-life balance, but you don't. So it's silly to talk about them as core values of your company if they're just not present. Okay. You also don't want core values that I would call pay to play values, like honesty or showing up to work on time. You need that, right? And I know it can be hard to find, but if that's really as high as you're reaching, then you could probably do a little bit more, right? You could dig a little bit deeper. These core values are used and, and at their best, you're repeating them. There's just a few, three to five at the most. Right? And you're going to repeat them and use them as a filter to hold your people up against them, hold yourself up against that and think, well, you know, do I do that all the time? Not, not most of the time, right? But almost all the time. Or do I not? Right? Uh, core values. The next is scorecard. Now, scorecard, here's, here's the premise with a scorecard. Creating a scorecard is that like a dashboard key performance indicators, people call them all kinds of things. With EOS, we want you to measure activities, verbs, right? Things that change every week. Number of cold calls, number of social media contacts, um, number of audits that you did on, on your work internally, uh, maybe a, a wait time for your customers, um, number of new clients, the sorts of things that are a weekly number 
the sorts of things that if you were on that desert island or if you were, you know, kind of having a good life next to an infinity pool or if you were stuck someplace, if you had just these few dozen or so numbers, you would know that things were going well in your company. You'd have a pulse on what was actually happening. They should be the numbers of if you had a kind of an old school floor of people making widgets and you looked around, you would know what they were doing. They would measure the piles of waste or the piles of, of product being made. Uh, and they're based in each of the functional areas that pulls right from that accountability chart. So if you're supposed to do something, how many of those somethings are you supposed to do every week? The next is rocks. So rocks, as we talk about how do we play this game, what is the game, right? So first we've got values, then we've got actions, but now rocks are your goals. It's, it's, it's that next 90-day goal. If you, uh, if you were ever part of a sports team in school, then you know that you might have had this big, big audacious goal to go win the states, right? But the goal for the first part of training might be that you were going to go clobber your rival in the neighboring town. Right? It, it kind of gets bigger and bigger as you go. The same with your business. You might have a goal that you want to be the, whatever you want to be, right? You're the number one something, the best known name, or maybe it's just that you want to replace your, the income from your nine to five, or you want to save to um, buy a car, or you're going to save to reinvest and, and own a home. Whatever that big goal is for you, you really need to kind of notch it down to what, what is reasonable to accomplish in the next 90 days. How will you know that you won 90 days from now? What does done look like, right? What are the things that are most important through all the other 87 problems that are going to cross your plate every single day? Through all of the ups and downs, no matter what else happens, no matter who's sick or who loses a job or what 2020 throws at us next, right? What do you really have to focus on getting done? Those are the rocks. And as your team grows, everybody will have a rock. Everybody has a number on that scorecard. Everybody is responsible for upholding your core values, not just you. And so having a conversation with them every 90 days, Understanding back to that truth, number one, that this is not about personal value, and number two, that it's about simplicity, and that you are responsible for creating the lack of, lack of complexity, right? It's not your job to make it easy, but you have to make it simple enough so that we then can have these conversations about rocks, scorecards, and core values in a top-of-mind kind of way, moving everybody forward together so that as you're managing growth, actually growing together in the same direction. That's the idea. So once again, job performance does not equal personal value. Simplicity is essential, and you have to know how to win. The 555. So coming directly from that teaching, this tool called the 555 assumes that you have five core values, five roles on an accountability chart, five things that you are responsible for doing, and five rocks for that quarter. So that every quarter, your roles are the numbers that are on that scorecard. And if you were to think about this as the like arching over the person, right? So your direct report, um, we'll, we'll call your direct report Anna. She's right in front of you. And her job, um, it is divided and very clearly identified core values for everybody. She knows what her rocks are. And she knows what her roles are. She knows what her reading are, what she's supposed to be doing. So you have this conversation. It has the same agenda every time over the course of time. Even do this weekly for a while. If somebody's new coming in, you just want to check in with them and make sure that they understand their place within your organization. Again, you, you will also ask about their dog and their family outside of this. You'll also do other things to get to know each other. But it's not about knowing or liking each other. It's not about personal value. It's whether or not this person is doing what you need to have done, executing on your plan so that your company can get where you want it to go. And your homework 
is to make sure that these things are clear for anybody that is already working with you because they can't win if you don't know them, if, if, if you haven't told them what the game is that they're playing, right? It's only fair. So, a little pop quiz. If I can ask for some backup with a comment section on this um, to help me see the answers, right? So, the growth management pop quiz. The tools that I've discussed today require the leader to be what? Feel clear about your expectations, right? Candid about performance. Candid, of course, really honest, just open and honest. Committed to excellence. Not just good, not just great. Excellence. So what's the answer? Anybody? Well, I think this one uh, seems to be like everyone thinks all of them. So all of them. Excellent. Excellent, of course. Yes, all of them, right? All of the above. And who wouldn't want to be the leader who is clear about their expectations, who's candid about performance, and who is truly committed to excellence? That's a team that anybody wants to be part of. That's a team where word gets out, right? You may not be looking for anybody, but people will start to say, you know, I'd like to work with you. You ever have an opening? You ever get a chance? Keep me in mind, right? People don't join organizations so much as they follow leaders. Likewise, they don't leave your company so much as they just leave you. Like it or not, right? We're humans. And where we have opportunity, where we fit the best, most often, um, it's lovely to be part of an organization when you have a leader uh, that truly exhibits these, these three characteristics. So I certainly wish you well. Um, these are tools that I use every day uh, with my clients. They're the sorts of conversations that we have uh, all the time. And I can tell you that every single one of my clients has looked me in the eye and said, I didn't even know that there was somebody like you. I didn't know that this was a thing. Operations and leadership consulting uh, and training. Um, and it is. So Waldron Works is my company. You can find me on all the socials. And I look forward to connecting with you at some point in the future. Great. Thank you so much for pursuing. Um, thank you, Wendy. We just have a couple quick questions. Um, I'm hoping we can just stick around for about five minutes and, and then we can wrap it up. Um, the question really became, is it, would you change the process if you only had uh, freelancers or contractors as opposed to like your full-time employees? Yeah, now, uh, the quick answer is no, I would not. Um, I think that the words that get used are maybe a little bit different, right? So you don't talk about job description, you talk about scope of work. If it's a contractor, it's almost more important to be super clear about exactly what you're contracting them to do, right? Um, so the same things, though, are important, and especially now in our workplaces and the way companies are growing, it is increasingly uh, normal that you really don't have very many employees. You might have a big company, and most everybody is contract, or most everybody is you know, working in a different way than a traditional setup. Um, so, no, I would say that it is equally, if not more important to be clear on expectations, to be clear about the difference between someone's personal value uh, and their value for your company, um, and to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, it's when we start saying, oh, it's really complicated, I'm not sure how to whatever, that we have trouble making decisions, and therefore we have trouble taking action. You get stuck. Great. Uh, another question. Any tips or advice on uh, managing employees who are remote? I think this is a big one for this year. Oh, uh, for sure. Um, two things I would say. Um, one is that most of us, we're not just remote, but truly our capacity is just a little diminished. Now, that's not true for everybody, but it is true for a lot of people that we are not quite as just not quite on the ball or quite as sharp as we'd like to think that we are. Um, some of us have that realization and, and that self-knowledge and some of us don't. Um, so one thing is to just break it down. If you have a, an eight, eight step process that needs to happen, by all means, share that eight step process, but maybe check in after everyone, right? Break it down so that it's one smaller task at a time 
so that you can have just a, a more transactional sort of relationship, even if it's someone that you've worked with for many, many years. Um, that's just easier. It's a way to, to take that concept of simplicity and apply it to our work today. Um, the other is to be as, um, to communicate as much as you can, to really over communicate, um, but to do so during whatever your regular business hours are. Use the options that we have available to only send emails. Have you write it up whatever time of day you want to, but when you go to send it, you have an option of when you're going to send it. Just be courteous about that, right? Um, reserve Slack channels and the, the kind of immediate text messaging stuff, um, either for casual conversations uh, or for when you really need to get in touch with somebody. But let them turn their computer off. Let them go back to having dinner in their home at their kitchen table. Let them go back to having some family time uh, or time that is away from your common activity so that um, they're fresher and more on the ball when they come back to it. Great. I'm really mindful of time and we have so many more things to continue. So I hope we'll get another chance to bring Wendy back and do another session. But thank you so much for your time and your insight. Um, this framework was really helpful. I know I, I learned a lot of things just about things that I should keep in mind and clearly communicate. And uh, thank you so much. And thanks to all of our attendees for uh, joining us today. And we look forward to the con conversation continuing. Excellent. Thank you.